So today, I honestly, I just decided to do something fun. Yesterday was Monday, and I do my Q&A, my five o'clock Q&A. No, it's not free. It's part of the black card, and that's the only way you get in. So if you're asking for how to do it, you need to send me a message and go, how do I get entrance to the black card? And I'll send you a bill. And then you pay it, and you get in. That's not how I was opening this. I'm, it's not a pitch. I'm just saying you want to buy from, it's always the same. You want to buy from elite? Great. Don't, I don't care. You want to join the black card? Awesome. You don't care. Then don't. The point is that I did my call yesterday and a couple of people asked me about tinnitus. And so I did a post, a real short post on tinnitus and solving it, right? Tinnitus is solvable, the ringing, hissing in your ears. And the medical world is a train wreck of which I'm part of, right? So I have to take some responsibility for that. But at the same time, I have to, I can also say, I'm not going to do what they do. I'm just going to solve the problems. I'm just going to give you guys answers all the time. That's it. Just solutions nonstop. So I thought today I would just do something fun and just make a full playbook on how to handle tinnitus and go through it line by line and explain what it is. And so you guys actually know what the hell it is. Cause I see the most nonsensical stuff. People being put on antidepressants for tinnitus. Are you out of your mind? So I promise you this, this will be probably the most valuable medical consult you'll ever get from your overpriced specialist, because I'm not going to talk about coping strategies or all the other bullshit. I'm going to perform an essential autopsy on the single biggest lie about tinnitus, which is that you have to learn how to live with it. The it is tinnitus, by the way, learn how to live with it. How's that a solution? Listen, you get this phantom scream in your skull, right? That's what I said. It's like this ringing, this hiss, this, it's a buzz that medicine has labeled idiopathic because we're idiots and don't know the pathos is too long for the damn chart. That's what I think. Really? It's the thing that drives rational people right to the edge. It's brutal. And the medical response is a pathetic cocktail of white noise apps and SSIs. Selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. It's giving a drowning man a glass of water and then going, hey man, get used to that feeling. Just so you know, that's pathetic. Listen, right? How many of you guys have seen speed? Pop quiz, hot shot, right? So pop quiz, what is tinnitus? That's the question, right? If you said an ear thing, you get a big giant F. You're wrong. And honestly, if you're a doctor and that's what you said, you're wrong. Your doctor is probably wrong because they always treat the damn ear. It's a neurological war. It's civil war because it's inside yourself. It's this phantom auditory perception. It's not in your ears. It's not. It's a software crash in the wetware of your damn brain, specifically your limbic system and auditory cortex, which are screaming a perpetual error code. It's a central nervous system maladaptation, which is why they're screwing it up. It's a faulty error signal stuck in a hellish feedback loop. Your brain's check engine light is flashing nonstop in your face and conventional medicine's solution is to just smash the bulb with a hammer and tell you the car is fine. So, Maybe we look at how this neurological error code actually affects you because it doesn't just, in, if you have tinnitus, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It doesn't just annoy you. It systematically and biologically dismantles you brick by brick. Start with balance. Your inner ear is a two-part system. Hearing and balance are the roommates, right? So the cochlea and the vestibular system share plumbing. Fluid, nerves, blood, etc. So when the cochlea gets damaged, the classic tinnitus trigger, by the way, the inflammatory cascade doesn't politely stay in its own damn lane. It floods the apartment. It swamps the vestibular organs, which corrupts the proprioceptive data stream to your brainstem and cerebellum, your body's awareness of itself in space. So here's the result. You're dizzy. You're unsteady. You feel like you're on a boat that you just can never get off of in your brain is now trying to cross-reference a corrupted audio file with a corrupted balance file. It's neurological gridlock at the most primal level. It's the most effective explanation you'll ever hear, and nobody else is going to explain it that way. It affects your cognition. This is where it gets evil. It's this relentless, intrusive noise. It's a cognitive vampire to you guys. It's this constant attentional hijacking your prefrontal cortex, which is your CEO, is your center for executive function and focus and decision making is being systematically robbed blind. It's diverting metabolic, precious metabolic resources, just so you know, glucose, oxygen, everything to try and filter out a signal that's fundamentally unfilterable, right? FMRI studies prove it. It's a decreased activity in PFC in the prefrontal cortex. You're not forgetful. You're cognitively bankrupt. Like it's real. 
Your mental resources are being liquidated to pay a debt to a ghost, to a phantom. It doesn't exist, right? So your sleep architecture gets trashed because tinnitus doesn't steal sleep. Fire bombs the sleep factory inside your brain. Falling asleep is hard because the noise is loudest in the quiet. But the real war is for slow wave sleep and REM sleep, right? Slow wave sleep is for physical repair. And REM is for mental and emotional reset. The limbic system, which is your brain's fear center. This is why it's so difficult. When you have tinnitus, the limbic system, like I said, it's the fear center of your brain, is in a state of hyper alert. It's hyper vigilant. So it's pumping out low grade stress signals, cortisol, IL-1 beta, TNF alpha, which are inflammatory cytokines. This chemical barrage acts like a neurological alarm that just doesn't shut off. So it prevents your brain from descending into those deep restorative stages of sleep that's required. So you wake up exhausted because you weren't sleeping at all. You were standing guard, right? You're standing guard all night long in this shallow, stressful pond of pseudo sleep waiting for an attack that from a ghost that never comes. So what? Here's the entire system. Like, just connect the dots. Just seriously, connect the damn dots. It starts with an insult, whatever it is, loud noise, infection, toxin. This damages the cochlear hair cells and reduces the signal going up the auditory nerve. That's just the beginning. But your brain hates silence. It's a pattern matching machine. That's how you're wired. So it makes a catastrophic miscalculation. The central auditory pathway cranks up the gain. If you've ever played an instrument, that's not a good thing when you do it too much. Neurons become hyper excitable to compensate for that missing signal. Remember what I said, the brain hates silence. This is the central gain enhancement. It's a bug. It's not a feature. It's a problem. These hyper excitable neurons start firing spontaneously. That's that phantom sound. That's the tinnitus. So this aberrant signal, follow me, this aberrant signal then gets wired into the, limb, the limbic system, so amygdala, hippocampus, and the autonomic nervous system, right? And the sound is no longer just a sound. It gets coded as a threat. It's this predator in the dark that doesn't exist, but this triggers the full chronic stress response, right? HPA axis dysfunction, elevated cortisol, systemic inflammation, all of which cause all kinds of other problems in your system because this Systemic inflammation then feeds back into the system. This is where the loop comes in, further irritating the neural tissue. It's this perfect, vicious, self-sustaining, self-licking disaster cycle. It's a biochemical Ouroboros. Like, it's a mess. Tinnitus isn't a symptom. It's a whole body neurological disorder masquerading as an ear problem. Now, here's what's wild. Conventional playbook is a freaking joke. It's pathetic. If you know already where I'm going to go with this, sound therapy, CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, antidepressants, they are managing the psychiatric reaction to a biological symptom. Make it make sense. What they're doing is they're teaching you, follow me, listen, they're teaching you to be a more compliant hostage. CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, is a psychological gag order. Give me a break. Sound therapy is oral wallpaper to cover the mold all over the walls. They're putting a bereavement counselor in a room with a patient who's just hemorrhaging out on the table. They don't address the core pathologies, right? So watch the neuroinflammation, the excitotoxicity, the missing neurotrophic factors, and the systemic cytokine storm that's going on. They don't touch any of that stuff. None of it. What they're doing is they're treating the check engine light. That's it. Not even the symptom, not even what's causing it. They're just treating the light. You need to be an engineer and fix the engine. So pop the hood and fix the damn engine. That's, let me explain how this works. You move from pathetic management to biochemical control. I'll just walk you through the whole thing because I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. BPC-157. This isn't a, a drug, by the way. I had somebody go, oh, where do I get these drugs? They're not drugs. They're peptides. It's a systemic repair. It's like a SWAT team for repair. It's a master regulator. It systemically modulates VEGF and TGF beta. It initiates incredibly dense angiogenesis. Uh, the formation that builds new blood vessels, but on command, right? The cochlear damage is often ischemic. It's starving for blood. It doesn't have a good blood supply. So BPC-157 floods the zone, delivers oxygen and nutrients directly to the damaged hair cells and the striovascularis. So it directly suppresses the pro-inflammatory cytokines, allowing things to do their job. TNF-alpha, IL-6, but it does it at the source. It douses the neuroinflammatory fire that's fueling the entire neuronal hyperexcitability. There's, it does so much more. 
Never mind what it does with GABA. It upregulates GABA, which is your chief, your brain's chief inhibitory neurotransmitter. But this is the most direct pharmacological counterstrike to the glutamate-driven excitatory excitotoxicity that's causing this ghost signal, this phantom signal. It promotes it, it promotes repair by actually doing the repair. It, it fixes the endothelial and it, tissue and the nerve tissue. This isn't suppression, you guys. This is like going into your house and doing a complete structural renovation. And that's just one. I'm just warming up. Cerebral lysin. And people look at this. I had somebody ask me if it's a neuro, neurotropic. No, it's not. Not even close. This is neurotrophic artillery. It's a peptide preparation that is the functional equivalent of NGN, NGF, BDNF, GDNF. It's your brain. Imagine, okay, so it's brain food. It's like miracle Girl, right? So your brain is a garden that's been just seared and scorched. Cerebral lysin is everything. It's the rain, the fertilizer, and the landscaper, the high-priced landscaper that knows what they're doing. It promotes neurite outgrowth, synaptogenesis, and neurogenesis. Physically rewires the faulty circuits in the auditory cortex and the limbic system that are stuck in the, what did I say at the beginning, right? That tinnitus feedback loop. It gives the direct neural protection against excitotoxicity, stabilizes neuronal membranes, and shuts down hyperexcitability, which is part of the problem. This is why you have to understand physiology. Like I say this all the time, if you don't understand how to put this together, there's the issue. It enhances cerebral glucose metabolism and cholinergic transmission. It refuels the prefrontal cortex that tinnitus has completely bankrupted. This is a hard biological reset of your central nervous system's operating system. Still not done. KPV, the melanocortin peptide, right? This is a, it's like a microscopic assassin. <laughs> it's the easiest way to say it. It's this potent, irreversible inhibitor of NF kappa B. Now, this is why it's important. NF kappa B is the master switch for inflammation. So KPV walks in and just cuts the power to the entire system. The whole systemic inflammatory cascade gets shut down it, because it specifically targets and modulates inflammation in the limbic system. It uncouples the emotional distress from the tinnitus sound. It tells your amygdala, hey, it's okay, man. Fight's over. We got you. We won. So the sound, by the way, might still persist a little bit, but the terror is gone. So the emotional charge gets neutralized, which is how this begins. It repairs the gut, brain, and blood-brain barriers along with BPC-157. Chronic inflammation makes them leaky. If you were, like yesterday, I went over leaky gut. So chronic inflammation makes them leaky, letting inflammatory cytokines seep into the brain. KPV seals the leaks the same way BPC seals up the leaks against LPS coming from your sewer pipe intestines into the nice clean bloodstream and the immune system goes bananas, right? So that's why this is very similar. Hey, listen, here's the kill shot. This isn't some kind of multi- angled approach. It is a very synchronized biochemical blitzkrieg that annihilates the process at every single node of the disease. And it's not a disease. It's just a, it's an inflammatory problem and a maladaptation, a hyperexcitability problem. The insult causes damage. The brain increases gain. Hyperexcitability creates the phantom sound. The limbic activation triggers the chronic stress response and systemic inflammation reinforces the damage. So it becomes this the cycle that just never stops. So here's how it works. Watch, BPC-157 neutralizes the peripheral damage and ischemia. It's the repair and the anti-inflammatory agent. Step one. Step two, cerebral lysis. And these are all done together. Step two, repair. This is for your kangaroo experiment, right? This is all for your kangaroo experiment. Step two, cerebral lysis is going to repair the central neurological dysfunction. It rewires and refuels, right? That's what its job is. And then KPV is going to, just destroy the systemic and limbic inflammation. It's the uncoupling agent. It's the silence. It's the thing that silences the entire mess. Here's why, here's why medicine fails. It's because it's practiced by specialists who see the body as a collection of disconnected parts, right? The ENT, the ENT sees a broken ear. The neurologist sees a software glitch, and then they argue about what's right. The psychiatrist sees an anxiety disorder, but they don't talk to each other. They have no, no tools that address the interconnected system. So their toolbox contains a hammer and a freaking spoon and probably a Band-Aid. The toolbox I just gave you, and genomic laser, a synaptic welder, and an inflammatory neutron freaking bomb. They call it permanent because... The medical doctors are impotent. I, it's solvable because now you are you have the answer. You're equipped. Like tinnitus isn't a life sentence. It's a physiological equation. And he, these, all the variables, I've just given you all the variables to solve it. 
The ringing's not in your ears. It's the noise because it's from your system being in chaos. So you have to stop accepting this before you even bother, before you're like, I don't know, let me see if it works. You have to stop accepting that it's an ear problem based on that you're in this life sentence in a prison of someone else's ignorance. You get this, right? Like if you want to solve this problem, you just got to follow the rules. You just got to look at the physiology and you have to apply what's required to solve the problem, which is what I just did for you. I think personally, it's just time to blow off the frigging doors. I anyway, hope you got something out of this. I got to go. Never miss.